Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Ve salatu ve selam Ala seyyidin mursinin nebiyyina Muhammed Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain Ve yaskala subhanahu ve teala That he makes us of those who fast Ramadan, iman and ihtisab And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pardon And we ask for his favor And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he makes us of those Who he frees and spares from the fire From his mercy and his bounty which is abundant upon his creation. This is another session where we are looking at a hadith from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, pertaining to the virtues of fasting the month of Ramadan, as we find in the book, Riyadh al-Saliheen, Min Kalam Sayyidina Muslimin by Imam al-Nawi, Rahimahullah. And the, the chapter, Bab, Wujub, Sawm Ramadan, Wa Bayan, Fadl al-Siyam, Wa Ma Yata'anluk Bih, the obligation of fasting the month of Ramadan, and an explanation of the virtues of fasting, and whatever is connected to it. And we are now in the last two ahadith of this chapter before, inshallah, in tomorrow's chapter we look at what the author says, Bab al-Jood wal-Fi'l al-Ma'roof wa-Ikthar min khayr fi shahr Ramadan. And the chapter title goes on, but the generosity and the favor and the kindness that you find from the person who is fasting. That is tomorrow, but we here now have two hadith on the authority of Abu Hurairah. This is in Bukhari and Muslim, and the Messenger of Allah. Now these two hadith, they seem as if they are talking about two completely separate issues. But what is intended here by the author, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, is what happens in the beginning of the month of Ramadan. Meaning even before you have fasted, as soon as the sun sets, look what happens. On the authority of Abu Hurairah, again, this is Bukhari Muslim, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, إِذَا جَاءَ Ramadan, when Ramadan now enters. So now, once the sun has set on Sha'ban, and now we have entered into Ramadan, you are preparing yourself for your first Salat to Taraweeh, tomorrow is going to be the first day of fasting. This is what happens. إِذَا جَاءَ Ramadan, فُتِحَتْ When another narration, as we see here, actually, with the Shadda, فُتِحَتْ now the difference here is with the Shadda is there is more emphasis. We find this in the Arabic language and pl- plenty in the Quran and the Sunnah. Meaning is open with <coughs> is open with a vast opening. It's not just open a little bit. It's made wide open. وَغُلِّقَتْ Again now here the Shadda. Sealed up. Not just closed. أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ Again with the shadda, that the shayateen are chained up. Now in this hadith, the shaykh is saying here, Shaykh Muhammad al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, that we learn three things at the advent of the month of Ramadan. Number one, the doors of Jannah are open. Number two, the doors of the hellfire are locked. And number three, the shayateen are chained up. What is the meaning of this? The meaning here is that the doors of Jannah are open for those people to ghiban lil amilin For those people who want to seek it. So for those people who want to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jannah, this is the best or one of the best opportunities that they will experience throughout the year in their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up the doors of Jannah. And for those people who want to be spared from the fire, this is now the best opportunity to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save you from his anger and his punishment and from the fire. With this, from the Thaymeen, rahimahullah, I say here, there is an incitement to increase in doing good deeds, such as salah, sadaqah, dhikr of Allah, reciting the Quran, anything which is deemed as a good deed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to abstain from anything which is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the two. The third thing was suffidat al-shayateen. The shayateen are chained up. Now the shaykh is saying here, what this means is, al-marada minhum. Now there's another narration which is not here, but al-marada refers to those ones, the shayateen, which are the worst of the shayateen. Not all of the shayateen. 
Now this is an issue where the scholars have differed and in actual fact I just want to allude to one thing here which is that some of the people of Kalam have said that this is metaphorical the shayateen are not really locked up and this is all just the messenger of Allah subhanahu giving you uh, a scenario which you can imagine but it's not really there in order to encourage you Ibn Hajar rahimahullah says that there is no need for us to take it in a majazi or a metaphorical form. And this is the stance of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and this, like I've said, is an issue in Aqeedah, which is off from the topic a little bit. But he says, no, we're taking its literal form. The doors of Jannah are made wide open, the gates of the hellfire are sealed shut, and the devils, which are the worst ones, and this has been mentioned by Ibn Hajj, and this is what Nuthaymin is saying here as well, are chained up. And the reason for this, Ibn Hajar goes on to mention, Rahimullah, is so that now look at the favor of Allah. Not only is Jannah made wide open and the hellfire seal shut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is holding back from you an enemy which wants to distract you, an enemy who does not want your deeds to go through the doors of Jannah, an enemy who does not want you to be spared from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds these shayateen, which are the worst of them, not all of them that we have said, during this month. For what purpose? Ibn Hajar goes on, so that the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can increase. And so that the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can increase upon his servants. وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيْخِ The shaykh is saying here, these are three very important issues that occur in the beginning on the month of Ramadan and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us this and it is true and this is what he's alluding to here like we have said that some of them have said no it's metaphorical etc no he said we have to take it as it being true and it is literal he has told us out of sincerity towards us the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu wants us to enter into Jannah. He wants us to be spared from the fire. He wants us to defeat our enemy. And he wants us to increase in good. And he wants to warn us from anything which is bad for us. That's the first hadith. But now we have the second hadith. And like I said, on first viewing, it may seem as if there are two separate issues. But like we have said, the way that we can uh, reconcile them and bring them together is that this occurs, the opening of the doors of Jannah and the sealing of uh, the hellfire and the chaining up the shayateen as soon as the next hadith is established on the authority of Bukhari again and again this is in the Bukhari and Muslim but this wording here is from Imam Bukhari and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he said sumu li ru'yatih fast when you see it meaning the new moon wa aftiru li ru'yatih and break the fast when you see it meaning the new moon so when you see the new moon at the end of Sha'ban now the beginning of Ramadan and when you see the new moon at the end of Ramadan now you understand that we have entered into Shawwal and this is now Eid al-Fitr and if it is then uh, clouded from you complete the period of Sha'ban of 30 this is the wording on Bukhari in Muslim now this is concerning the end of Ramadan if you do not see the new moon for Shawwal, meaning the day of Eid, then complete 30. And this is how the month is established. And the ulama have said in the books of fiqh, now here is a very important benefit. A lot of people, they want virtues. A lot of people, they say, I need to increase in my akhlaq. I want to learn about things which are going to soften my heart. I want to learn about heart softeners and things like that. And quite often, people, they spread, you know, small clips to encourage people to establish this in themselves. But I would say, in my opinion, that this is a mistake. As we see here, the Shaykh Imam Nawi, rahimahullah, is bringing a hadith which is predominantly used in the books of fiqh to talk about the bayan of the fadl of, of, of fasting in the month of Ramadan. And the point that I'm making here is, is that you can't detach heart softeners and those things which are going to increase you in your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your consciousness of Him 
away from the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They go hand in hand. Therefore, if a person wants to say, I just want to learn akhlaq, or I just want something which is going to uh, boost my iman, or something like that, there is no such book or topic that you find in the Sharia which is separate from aqeedah and tafsir. All of this is connected. And this, I feel, is a big problem and a calamity that I feel uh, that the Muslim Ummah is facing, not just in English, but even in Arabic, even in other languages. So now here in this hadith, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying here, if you see the new moon, فَسُومُوا لِرُؤْيَتِهِ If you collectively see the new moon, then fast collectively. And if you see the new moon, فَأَفْتِرُوا بِرُؤْيَتِهِ Collectively, because he's using the plural. And if it is cloudy and you don't able, you're not able to see the new moon, then complete it as 30. The connection, as we have said, as soon as you have seen the new moon, the doors of Jannah are now open, and the doors of the hellfire are sealed shut, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds back your enemy for you, so that you can run forth towards his mercy, and towards his Jannah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the Shaykh is saying here as well, from the ahkam and from the fiqh, is that if the people see it, now here, uh, the ulama in total agreement. Now this is again a calamity which has befallen us. People they say because of one reason or the other. Some people say well we don't trust Saudi Arabia anymore. Some people say we don't like the politics in Saudi Arabia anymore. Some people say this and some people say that. All of this is not founded in the books of fiqh at all whatsoever. Not ever will you ever find a scholar saying well if you don't like that country choose a different country. And the reason why is because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying here, Sumu What is he saying here? All of you, the Ummah, collectively, if you see the new moon, then fast. Collectively, the Ummah, he's using the plural, he's not saying one or two. He's not saying break off and do your own thing. And this is, again, with the agreement of the scholars. Yes, the Shafi'iyah, they believe in something which is known as Ikhtilaf al which is that every land should have its own viewing. However, the Shafi'iyah have also said that if it's going to cause disunity and confusion, then this is not allowed. The purpose is that there's a message of Allah is saying here, in a plural form, as a jama'ah, stick to the jama'ah, begin the month together, and end the month together. And if you can't see anything, then complete 30 together. And again, like I said, there is no difference of opinion between the ulama on this. Yes, there may be a difference of opinion where some of them have said, if you personally have seen the new moon, and the Qadi does not accept it, the authorities don't accept it, then is that person supposed to fast himself because he now knows that the month has entered? So some of the ulama have said, no, again, even in this scenario, they say he should stick to the jama'ah, which is that if he now knows it's Ramadan and everybody else thinks it's still Sha'ban, he should fast because he now knows, because he, is, he has witnessed it. But he should do it in secrecy. Why? Because he should not go against the Jama'ah. And the same thing when it goes to Iftar. Now, concerning this year particularly, more than one person has asked, how is it possible that they saw the new moon when it was so cloudy? And I'm not sure if you've seen any of the videos or the clips. And it was very cloudy in uh, Tumair and Sudair and... Uh, and Marsad and these different areas that are the main areas in Saudi Arabia for viewing. An image, a CCD image, which is of a, using technology, they captured the image at 10 o'clock the next morning of the Hilal. Now, what do we do with this? Now, this is again very important because it's connected to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah. The majority of the ulama from the former dahib are all agreed that if you see the hilal during the day, then that hilal is for the forthcoming night. It doesn't apply to the night from before. So now they've sent out this image saying that this is the image of the hilal. We didn't take an image, to the best of my knowledge anyway, of when we actually saw it. But here is the hilal, 10 o'clock this morning. You can see it clearly. There is the hilal, a new moon. So now with the majority of the ulama, they have said, well, that now means we have started our fast a day early. We should have completed Sha'ban because they saw it at the daytime, so it should apply for the next day. The Maliki have said, if you see it before the Zawal, then it is included 
for the sighting for the night before. So you go to see the new moon. And it normally happens at Maghrib time. And the, the Hanabil and the Shafi'i say, if you don't see it before Maghrib, or a window after Maghrib, khalas, I see you've not seen it. And then you complete 30 as the Messenger of Allah said here. There's no such thing as seeing the Hilal during the day. The Maliki has said, okay, you go out. If you see it, alhamdulillah. If you don't, then look again before Zawal the next day. So now this is the 30th of Sha'ban or the 30th of Ramadan or any other month. And if you see it before the Zawal, then it is included for the night before. Umar radiallahu was approached, now this is the hadith or the narration of Abu Wa'il. Abu Wa'il, he came to the Umar radiallahu This is from Musannif and others. And he said to Umar radiallahu we've seen the Hilal during the day. What do we do in this scenario? And this is our scenario here. This is precisely what we, we've got our image at 10 o'clock. They have said that they saw the Hilal the night before, but there doesn't appear to be any delil. I mean, the Qadi and the, the Mahkama and the, uh, the courts have accepted it in more than one country. And this is coming to the point. So Umar and said, we will include it as the Hilal from the night before if you can bring two witnesses. The brothers in charge in the Emirat said they saw it. Saudi said they saw it. Oman said they saw it. And other countries in the Gulf region said they saw it. So from the hukum now is, if you see the Hilal during the day, going on the image that we have from the daytime, that is then included based on the, the narration of Umar Adilan for the night before, which then makes our establishment of the month of Ramadan this month, alhamdulillah, in conformance to what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said here Wallahi Alhamd These are from the Ahkam And obviously from the uh, Bayan Fadl and from the virtues And from the encouragement The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying here Establish the month of Ramadan Once the month of Ramadan Has entered the favor of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Is immense on you The doors of Jannah All of your good deeds are entering through those doors Ascending up to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala your tawbah and your istighfar is accepted. Your bad deeds are being overlooked because the doors of hell are shut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expiated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has back your enemy who wants to distract you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favor. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his tawfiq. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his acceptance in the dunya and in the akhirah. And that, wallahu a'lam, wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله tomorrow session not after asr after ظهر بإذن الله for tomorrow and Sunday إن شاء الله after ظهر بإذن الله سبحان الله